Okay, we're back today, and um, today we're going to go over a couple of uh, topics. One of them is going to be dot .split and dot .join. So let's go into IPython here, and um, so let's open another terminal so we can actually take a look at some documentation as well. And I'd like to go into uh, Python 3, and uh, I'm going to go help string, or str. And we've done quite a few of these um, ones. We've done count before, right, where you can count a substring in a string. We've done this manually too, but it's got it built in. Um, it'll tell you how many times a substring occurs in a string. Um, we won't do encode and a few of the other ones just yet. We've done find. Uh, we've done index. That's an important one, right? It's you know, uh, kind of. Yeah, returns the lowest index uh, in S where substring is found. Um, you know, lists have index too. Okay. Um, we've done is alpha. There's a few other ones like is digit is 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 alphanumeric. Um, we they're pretty self-explanatory, but the ones that I want to focus on today. Uh, is let's start with uh, join. Okay, so join says returns a string, which is the concatenation of the strings in the iterable. Okay, so let's go to our terminal and so if you'll notice the iterable. is um, inside the brackets, OK? Notice, so then, what is s? The sep s is the separator between the elements. So, OK, so let's, let's create a, a um, well, let's create a, let's create the alphabet for x in range ordinal a comma ordinal z oops there's brackets around that's a function call ordinal z and then let's go plus one because we want z and now we'll go um, L dot append uh, chrx. Okay, so at this point, we have the alphabet in a list. Great. Well, dot join can actually take these strings and put them together. So the first argument, remember, is a string, which is the separator character. Now, it doesn't have to be a character. It could be more than one character. But I am going to use one character. I'm going to use that guy. And then I'm going to go dot join. Whoops. And then I'm going to go L. And when I do that, it returns a string. So dot join, the arguments, it's kind of funny because it's taking two things, right? Dot join is taking a string and then an iterable. And it is uh, joining them together with that. OK? Um, so interestingly, right, let's try something different. Um, remember, though, uh, 
the iterable has to be see, so the iterable can cannot be uh, like into like uh, uh, a list of integers you can't go like this list range 9 and um, let's see I'm missing one more that's not gonna work right because you you the iterable in this case uh, is not strings um, However, what's interesting, I'm curious here, because I always do this, the iterable I always use is a list, as in this example here. You could do something else. For example, um, you could do something like, you know, you could have more than one character there. You could do something like that and do dot join L, oops, and it would do something like that. Um, and of course, re it's returning a string. So in a program, th this line would totally make no sense, right? You could say, you could do something like this in a program that would make sense. Then you actually have the new string stored somewhere. But um, I wonder, you know, if we were to do something like if we did little s equals a, B, C, D, and then if we said um, dot join, now the iterable specified as little s, and that works too. So in other words, if you notice in the documentation, oops, where's the documentation? Here it is. Notice here, it says that in the brackets, it doesn't specify that it has to be a list. It just has to be an iterable. So a list is iterable, but so is a string. A string is also iterable, right? So is a tuple, OK? For that matter, so is a dictionary. Um, and so therefore, you use this first part to kind of sandwich everything together uh, like that okay so this is kind of this is kind of useful in a sense because what you're doing and in here's a really cool one in fact which I haven't even mentioned yet and this is in fact not the way I usually use join the way I usually use join so let's say for example if I have all the letters this is how I would usually use it. I would say the string is nothing, empty string dot join, and then I would say L. And now that's going to basically, so what we've done there effectively is we have changed the um, uh, list into a string. So curious, you know, if I did this, strl, that doesn't quite do what I was hoping for, right? So like, as an example, if I have an integer, so let's so say I have x equals 3, and I want that 3, which is an, uh, an, an integer now, I want it as a string. So I can go strx. This is kind of like data type conversions, right? I can change x into a string just by going str. I can also change a string which, by the way, has to be a number. Like, for example, if I go int and I go uh, 4, like that, that does convert the string 4. And obviously, obviously, that's not going to work if I did this, right? You, it can't change just a letter into an integer. But if the, if the string happens to be a number, then yes, it will convert it into an integer. Okay, so so int and and str are kind of like complementary functions, which will take an integer uh, to a string and back. So now you ask yourself, hmm, what about so what like you know what types of data do we have? Well, 
The other interesting conversion, obviously, is uh, strings to lists, right? And the other way around, and a list to a string. And so that's really kind of what we're dealing with right now. So what is what have we done with with join here? We've taken that list and we've turned it into a string. Okay, so doing this didn't quite work. Although this is the way we did it with an integer, this doesn't work because now what it's doing is it's taking L and it's, um, you know, we could do this manually too. In other words, this isn't the only way to do this, but it's a little bit more work. For example, if I wanted to do this manually and I had L being a list and I wanted to turn this into a string, I could say s equals nothing, and then I would say uh, for letter in L, okay, and then I would say s equals s plus letter. And when I'm done this, s is equal to this. Okay, so there you go. There's a for loop, which essentially does the same thing as that. Okay? But, obviously, the, the flexibility in join is that I can specify any character to go in between, or any, like, you know, not just any one character, but any string I can put uh, to sandwich them all together, okay? So obviously, like, if I was to do that here, I would, I would be able to do that uh, simply by going something like this, plus, plus, and now if I did that, uh, oh, right, I got to wipe out S first. Uh, let's try that again. S equals nothing, and now let's run this guy. And so now S is almost, almost, right? Almost. Notice, notice the slight difference. Okay, look at this one. And now, oops, sorry, didn't mean to select all that. So look at this first one. You see the difference between the one down here? Very close, right? We just have two extra stars in the beginning. So, in any case, um, that's join. And so let's do the opposite now. What about split? So let's go to uh, the documentation again. And we've done lower. Uh, another really cool one, uh, we've done replace. Our find is like reverse find, reverse index. So um, split is really, really interesting too. It says return a list of the words in S using a separator as the delimiter string. If max split is given, at most max splits are done. So max split is a, um, def has a default argument of negative one. And separator has a uh, default argument of none, although you can specify one. So in this case, s is a string, and notice it's returning a list of strings. Okay? So let's start with, oops, no, that's not where I wanted to go. Yeah, okay. So we've got l, and we've got s, and we've got little s. Uh, I actually want something a little different. So I want, um, for, well, I want s. I want to wipe out little s first, and then let's let's do the let's do the join again. Okay, and the, except this time, let's let's do that, and let's say. Uh, 
Well, let's just say S equals this. So now what's S? There we go. So S is the alphabet. And now I'm going to go S dot split. Now I'm not going to provide any argument. So you notice when I don't provide an argument, uh, what was the, I kind of lost my place here. Yeah, when I don't provide an argument, what's the separator? Nothing, right? So now watch this. So that's not quite what I wanted. Um, so what if I redo this? And I do this again, except this time, I'll do that. And now what's S? Okay. So now um, I've got A, B, the, the alphabet, but with dashes in between. So now if I wanted to change it, now I'm going to try and do the split. But now, I'm actually going to say, use the dash as the split. And to do ta-da, it changes it back into a list. So I take this string, and then it changes it into a list. OK? Now, curious, if I actually had it again, and um, I should be using two variables here. So let's maybe let's use R or something. And I went um, if I did R. Now R is this. Now if I wanted to change R into a list, I could just do this, and that works. Perfect. Okay, so if you have if you have just a regular old string and you want to change it into a list, just typing the keyword list in front of it will actually take every single uh, item it'll iterate through it and turn it everything into a list. But of course, this isn't as um, flexible, right? Because if you have something like this, or let's say those dashes were commas, then then this isn't gonna then you can't just go list. S, because that's not going to be what you want. In that situation, split is a lot more useful. Okay. So if I went S dot uh, split and split it on these guys, like I did before. Okay. So that's kind of an explanation of dot split and dot join. And they're pretty useful. Um, so I'll let you guys kind of uh, play with that for a bit. All right, so the next topic we're going to cover today is sets. And so let's um, go help set and so now let's take a look here it says an unordered collection of unique items and the interesting thing about this is the term unique okay um, so there's quite a few things we can do to a set we can we can add things to a set. Um, we can clear it. We can copy it. We can take a, a difference. We can take intersection. We can um, pop things out of a set. Uh, we can take the symmetric difference. We can take the union. And so uh, we're going to learn those today. Oh, actually, right now. So the first thing I'd like to do is all again. Let's say I have a set called A. 
and I have 1, 2, 3 in it. Then I have a set called B, and I have uh, 4, 5, 6 in it. So if I go A minus B, okay, which is, by the way, which is, this is called difference. Um, then I would get, it would result in 1, 2, 3, take away, oh, great. I messed up. Why did I mess up? Because they have nothing in common. Uh, so let's start again. <laughs> okay, A is 1, 2, 3, 4. B is... Uh, three, four, five, six. There we go. Okay. Now let's try it again. A minus B is equal to one, two, three, four. By the way, the answer to the one up before was nothing, right? Like empty set. But in this one, if I go three, four, five, six, the answer is going to be uh, one, two. Okay, so these are not, this is not 1,234. These are all individual numbers. I'm just not putting commas between them. On the other hand, just like in mathematics, where subtraction or difference is not commutative, what does that mean? It means that, so, so unlike addition that is commutative, that is commutative, right? Right, so if, if you said A plus B, in mathematics, that's equal to B plus A, and, and that's true. But A minus B is not equal to uh, B minus A. And that's also true here. So if I did B minus A, I'm going to get 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's going to give me 5, 6. Because I'm taking away 1, 2, 3, 4, and so therefore this 3 disappears, this 4 disappears because of these guys. Okay? And here in the one above, right, the 3 disappears and the 4 disappears because of the 3 and the 4 here. So the, this, this is how you do set subtraction, or like it's actually called uh, difference. Okay, and the the other example, right? We've already done. So let's let's do it again. Let's do the other ones again. So a union b is going to be one, two, oh. 1, 2, 3, 4, union, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's going to give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Notice that I will not have duplicates. So the 3 and the 4 here and the 3 and the 4 here only occur once. No duplicates. Uh, oops, maybe you guys aren't seeing this because of um, my, my images right here. So I should be careful not to write in there. But anyways, um, so there's no duplicates. Okay, so you can't, so all sets are have unique items. Okay, and once again, let me do the other example. This one, this one, by the way, was called, right, union. And then this one's called, uh, intersection. So A and B is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And then uh, the intersection was uh, here. Uh, let's try it here. Okay, 
So let's go, let's say A is equal to set, and this is how you make it, okay? Let's say we say um, one, two, three, four. So in essence, I mean, um, if I was to create a list, let's say I said L equals uh, one, two, three, four. No problem. I can turn L into a set. So I'll say A equals set um, L, just like that. And so now A is the set. Notice it has the braces of a dictionary, but there are no, but there's not pairs in it. No pairs. Okay. By the way, here's a really cool trick I'm going to show you. Watch this. If now in a list, there's no restriction on having duplicates. So watch this. Let's say you had three, four, three, three, three. Oops, not that. Oops. Okay, and then there you go. And let's say a two. There you go. So there's my list. So one, two, three, four, three, four, a whole bunch of threes, a whole bunch of fours. And so now look, if I go A equals set L, that right there is a incredibly useful trick. In, or uh, a useful, not even a trick, it's like a, it's a really useful way of getting rid of duplicate items in a list. Because now you might say, okay, well, yeah, but it's a, it's a set right now. It's not a list. No problem. I could just say, for example, um, you know, M is equal to list A. And now, there you go. So essentially, if there was ever a question, you know, in any programming application you had to write that said, oh, you have a list and you have all these duplicate items, you just, you need to only get it down to the unique items. The easiest way to do that is to make a set of the list and then change it back to a, uh, make, change it back to a list again and you'll only have the unique items. I can't stress how awesome and useful that is. Okay, very easy way of, of um, accomplishing that. There's a, there obviously there's other ways of accomplishing it, but very simple way. Here, let's let's analyze how would we do this if we did not have a set. Okay, so let's let's take L again, right? And let's do what we just did, but let's say, all right, we're not going to use a set. How would we do it? Well, we'd have to create a, uh, let's say, a new list, right, where we would put everything in, and then we would say, uh, we'd have to iterate over the L, so we go for um, num in L. And then we'd say, okay, well, uh, actually, you, you know what? Here, instead of me doing this for you, how about you give this a shot? I'm gonna, you pause the video now, and what's the, our objective here is make little d uh, contain, now here's the thing, make little d contain um, only the, uh, what's it called, unique numbers. Okay, pause it and try it. Okay, so let's do it. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go for num in L, if num not in, D, then we'll go D dot append num. And when we run that, there you go. So, I mean, okay, fine, it's like a loop with an if statement, you know, three lines of code, but nonetheless, 
changing it into a set effectively does the same thing. But now I have a more interesting little mini assignment for you, just have very similar to what we just did. Now instead of getting all the unique items or you know creating a list of all the unique items uh, so maybe you know maybe I should have actually maybe D was a bad variable to use maybe I should have said you know um, U equals uh, empty and then did this where I said U standing obviously for unique and so when I do that now U is this let's make D uh, represent the duplicates now so take a look at this list obviously we still have L intact what are the duplicates here now obviously 2 is duplicated the first and the last right the 3 is duplicated and the 4 is duplicated or duplicates of but the 1 is not the 1 is unique okay so what I want you to um, create or is the, the list D that only has the duplicates so it should have 2 3 and 4 but not 1 because 1 doesn't happen more than once okay so write a little loop or a script such that you will get a list D only of the duplicates. <laughs> Give it a shot. Okay, let's try it out. So, um, one way to do this, if we just want, to, if we want to get the duplicates, is um, to essentially um, change. Let's well. There's a number of different ways to do this, but one way we could do it is with a loop. So we could say um, for uh, number in L. And then I could say if L dot count number, which which basically is saying, right, count how many times that number is in L. If that's if it's greater than one, right, then go d dot append um, um, the number. Okay. And so when I do that, uh, oh, okay, yeah. But see, here's the thing. Um, that's not going to work because now I've got too many copies of it. Although those are the right things, right? Um, so how would I modify that slightly? So let's clear D again. And then I could say, well, mm, I could say, uh, and, Now, here's the other thing. I could say and um, num not in L, or sorry, not, not, not in L, not in D. Let's try that. That works, OK? Uh, or what's another way to do this? OK, so let's wipe out D again. Another way to do this is to kind of get rid of this part and say, how about for num in set L? Well, that, is that going to work? Yeah. So in this case, what you're doing is you're saying, all right, well, let's just take the unique numbers. So essentially, both these things, both this one and, and this one did the same thing, OK? Okay, so uh, let's move on to um, let's move on to the other ones. So, oops, we have a 
And do we have B? No. OK, so let's make A and B. So we've got A is 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's make B equal to the, uh, the set of, um, well, actually, we don't even need to do set like that. I think we can just go like this, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so you don't have to say set every, to convert a, a list into a set every time. You can just type a, a set like that. So, OK, so now we've got B and we've got A. So once again, let's go all over all of them. A minus B is 1, 2. B minus A is 5, 6. Okay. That's, those, those are called difference. And, and by the way, just to tell you, you can use this method here, right? Return the difference of two or more. So in other words, um, if I went b, b, uh, b dot difference, I'm having trouble typing today, and I did that, OK, there you go. Which one do you prefer? I much prefer this one. It's less typing, and it's also clearer to me. OK, let's do the next one. Um, Let's do, let's do union. So if I go A union B, I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. A union, and by the way, union is commutative. It doesn't matter which way you do it. So that one's union. I, again, I much prefer this. That vertical line, by the way, is the shift above your enter key. And then. Uh, intersection is this one, A intersection, which is an ampersand B, and that gives you 3, 4. That's what's common to both. And if I go A dot intersection B, obviously this is so much nicer looking than this long giant word. Uh, now, the other one, the only other one left, so we've done difference, we've done union, we've done intersection. The other, only other one left is called symmetric difference, or what I like to call mutually exclusive. So once again, let's see what A is and what B is. And now if I go A hat, I call that like the hat, B, I get 1, 2, 5, 6. So just think about that. And let's go and take a look at the documentation for symmetric difference. OK. Uh, here it is. It says, OK, it, all right. All elements that are in exactly one of the sets, of the sets, plural. So oops. In other words, 3, 4, right? So if you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 4 is in both. But what are the numbers that are only in one of the two? Well, 1 and 2 is, are only in A. Therefore, they go in here. And 5 and 6 are only in B. Therefore, they go in here. So now here's a question I have for you. I want you guys to figure out how would you reproduce symmetric difference if you couldn't use the hat symbol? By the way, if you just, you know, if I go A, and, and this, is, this is also uh, commutative. So if I go like that, I'm going to get the same answer. Doesn't matter in which the order, OK? The only one that's not commutative is difference. However, here's my question. If I could not use this symbol, how can I reproduce this output using all the other ones that we've just learned? So of the ones we've learned, we've learned union, intersection, and difference. How can you use those three, maybe some of them, maybe all of them, 
to reproduce this output where you have symmetric difference. Okay, so pause the video and try it now. Okay, so let's do it. Here we go. So we're going to do this in uh, probably on the whiteboard would be better. So let's, um, yeah, I actually didn't even finish this, right? But I did it in the, in the thing, right? So this would be ampersand uh, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, that's going to give us 3, 4. Okay. So how do we do symmetric difference? So once again, we go A, symmetric difference, B. Yes. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, symmetric difference, 3, 4, 5, 6. And of course, we know that's going to give us 1, 2, 5, 6. But how do we get this? Question mark. Well, if you look closely, What's missing from in there? It's the 3, 4 that's missing. That should be the hint. How do, first of all, how would we get everything? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's A union B. Now we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now how do we get rid of the 3, 4? Well, we would just simply subtract. Now what is the 3, 4? That's what's common to both, right? Common to both? Hmm. That would be the intersection. Ha ha. So essentially, that's just the intersection would be 3, 4. So now when you, sub if you go the union, everything, take away 3, 4, you're left with 1, 2, 5, 6. And so this is one possible solution. Uh, and to verify that, let's try it here, right? Oops, not there. Here. So if I went um, A uh, union B, so and then I go subtract. I wonder if I'm going to need brackets here. Curious. Let's just try it and find out. Um, minus or subtract uh, difference A and B. And no, nope, I actually need brackets. So that didn't work. Let's try it now. Yay, that works. OK. So uh, and you probably figure out why that makes sense, right? Because uh, it doesn't know that it's going to do that before that. So. So now it works. OK, great. So what's the other way of doing this? We've got to go back to our blackboard. There is one other way to do this, right? And the other way to think about this is if you think about the 1, 2, 5, 6, think of it in as this and this. So now question, how would you get the 1, 2? So that means if I had 1, 2, 3, 4, and I and I let's say I, I don't want this now. So we're just working on this part here. Forget about the five, six for now. Just think about the one, two. How would I only get the one, two if I have one, two, three, four, which is A? Well, I know that B is three, four, five, six. Well, if I take away B, if I go A minus B, that's gonna leave me with one, two. Perfect. So I got this part. Oh, okay, so the first part is a minus B. Well, now think about the same logic for the second part, the 5, 6. How would you get the 5, 6? Well, I'd start with B, which is 3, 4, 5, 6. And then A is 1, 2, 3, 4. I think you know where I'm going with this. If I now subtract it, right, so the 3, 4 here cancels this 3, 4, and I'm left with 5, 6. Now that I've got the 5, 6, I, I really want both of these guys together. I want to combine them so I would union them. So I'd put a vertical line and go, and then I'd go B minus A. And let's try it. So it would be uh, A minus B union 
uh, B minus A. And that gives me symmetric difference as well. Perfect. So there's two different ways of doing it. And um, kind of cool. It's like mental gymnastics with logic. And um, very useful. OK, so uh, right now I think the best thing we could do is maybe to try some uh, applications using sets. So usually. I assign a program called uh, trading cards. But um, we don't really have enough time for that today. Um, however, what I will do is I'll describe the problem to you. So let's say you trade something like, you know, Pokemon cards uh, or uh, baseball cards or basketball cards, you know, sports types of, lo there's lots of cards. You, can, you know, you buy a pack, you don't know which ones you're going to get. You end up having uh, doubles of certain cards. And then what you do is, well, your objective, oops, your objective is to uh, get the entire set of cards, but it's difficult because some cards are hard to get. Now, you might have some cards that are valuable, you know, hard to get. And so what you end up doing is you end up meeting with your friends. So, you know, you might have a friend that's got some cards and, and then you've got some cards. And then you come together and on a table you put down your cards and you say, hey, listen, do you want to trade some cards? And the objective of every person is the same. In other words, Every person who's going to trade cards wants, the, the rules are you, 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 you give one card, you, you give one, you give up one, and then you get one. Okay? So, I don't know, I didn't really write that right. So you give up one card and you get one card. So the rules in this game are you, you can't really trade, you know, two cards. Uh, you can't exchange two cards, sorry, for one. So, you know, you know, in somebody, this is in real life that obviously is a possibility where you say, okay, I'll give you two different cards for that one card because that's a really valuable one. Let's just always assume that it's, it's a one for one trade. So now let's say that, um, let's say person A Okay, we'll call these person A and person B. Let's say person A has cards, uh, and I'll just make them integers for now to make it easy. Uh, let's say they have one, three, three, uh, five, seven, and uh, nine. And let's say uh, another nine. Okay, so now you ask yourself, okay, so let's, let's go to another person B. And let's say person B has uh, a 1, a 2, a 2, a, a 5, a 6, and a 6, and a 9 and a 9. So now you ask yourself, which cards would A be willing to trade? Well, if you go through here, A is only willing to trade the cards that he has duplicates of. So A is only willing to trade. So A will say A willing to trade. a 3 because he has duplicates of the 3 right so he's not willing a is never willing to give away things that he only has uh, individual items of so a is never willing to give away the 1 the 5 or the 7 because that would cause him to lose some right but he is willing to give away the 3 because he's got a duplicate of that one and he is willing to wait to give away the 9 because he's got duplicates of that one so that's it 
Um, on the other hand, the uh, person B is willing to trade. Uh, well, he's got duplicates of the 2 and the 6 and the 9. So this guy is willing to trade the 2, the 6, and the 9. Okay? So now what happens is, uh, let's say A says, I'm willing to give you a 3. What are you willing to give me? And let's just pretend that the, um, this guy, B, says, well, I'm, I'm willing to give you a 9. And A says, no, I don't want that. I've already got a 9. And, and then let's say, let's say B says, well, I'm willing to give you a 2. And then A says, yep, we'll trade that. So in fact, A gives up the 3 and the B gives up the 2 and so they exchange okay now after that's occurred even though um, B is willing to give up a six, uh, the not you know A doesn't want the 9 so that's not going to happen but there's still a 6 that B is willing to give up but unfortunately A doesn't have anything else that B would be willing to trade with. So that's not going to happen because B says, well, I don't, you don't have anything else that... I mean, obviously, right? Uh, B says, well, I, I want the 7, but A says, I'm sorry, uh, I won't give up my 7 because I've only got one of them. So essentially, this is the only trade that's possible. So what are their cards after the trade happens? Well, A now has, uh, so if I, maybe I erase this just for a second, just to show you. So after the, after the trade, A's got one, three, or actually, no, he's got a two as well, a three, but only one three, a five, a seven, and two nines. Notice that a lost uh, a lost a three and then after the trade uh, B ends up still ha still has the one uh, only has one two does have a three now because he got a three only one two though still got the five still got two sixes and still got two nines, okay? So in essence though, they both benefited from this trade. And so usually, uh, or many times, I have assigned this in the past to say, all right, well, if you start with this list and A starts with this and B starts with this, how would you end up determining after all possible trades are completed how do you end up with, you know, r produce a list with what the two uh, people end up having afterwards? So, so this turns into this, and this turns into this. Okay, so I'm not going to assign that for you. If you want to try it on your own, uh, it is involved. Um, and um, for an advanced assignment, I would say, okay, you can try it, but I'm not going to require this. I'm just going to say you can. it's good enough just to think about it at this point, and um, that's, all I'm, that's all I'm asking. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.